I have returned and survived. And today we are going to be talking about the utilization of a TPM module for full disk encryption in the upcoming Ubuntu 2510. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Thanks for checking out this video. And today we do want to talk about the upcoming changes to Ubuntu 2510, which are going to enable you to support a full disk encryption based on the TPM module. Now, before we get into this, I want to cover a little bit about the Windows issue because I've talked about this quite a bit in the past, and I think it's really worth mentioning what's going on here. As I have said, uh, starting a few years ago when we started doing our Windows Wednesdays, series looking at some of the things that Windows does. One of the things that we had highlighted is that they are starting to push out and force full disk encryption on people. And while full disk encryption is a good thing to prevent against your computer theft, to be clear, once your computer is turned on, full disk encryption does nothing. It does not prevent malware from seeing your device. It does not prevent any form of Trojans from accessing your information. If your computer becomes infected with malware, this type of encryption does not help. The only thing this encryption helps against is if somebody accesses your hard drive when your computer is turned off. That's what this type of encryption is. There's it rest encryption. There's in motion encryption. This is at rest encryption. It does nothing when the computer's already turned on. Now, it is something I recommend using, supposing you know what you are doing with it. In here in my van, especially since I work out of a mobile office, Every computer that can be encrypted is encrypted in this place because if the worst should happen, I just don't need people accessing computer files with client information and things like that. And so I do use full disk encryption and I use it on Linux with Lux require me to enter a pass key when I first turn on the system. Now there are other ways I can turn that on, but for me, the pass key is what works the best. I have a salt. I combine the salt with a phrase for each computer and I am in a position where I'm not going to forget these and I have them written down inside of password managers in the event that I might. And so I'm not at risk of losing anything here. And the challenge that I had, there have been a couple twofold challenges, a uh, few fold challenges probably with the at risk disk encryption forced on people on Windows computers. And that is number one, most people do not understand what that is. And if you are doing something on a person's computer, they do not understand it always brings up problems. Number two problem is if, uh, if everything is tied to that and you do not have a backup way getting into that system, you don't have that information. If something goes wrong with the hardware, force you to do something as simple as swapping the RAM, it might trigger the TPM module to not function. And this means that you would potentially lose access to your data. Now, Microsoft has tried to address this by when they force you to encrypt your system, they also put all of that, uh, the decryption passphrase into your Microsoft account. Of course, we talked about recently, Microsoft accounts get locked all, all the time and there's no real sane way to get back into your Microsoft account. If you get locked out of it, you may as well just start a new one. So that's not going to help. But I was trying to find a more recent article than this. This is from January of 2023. Somebody says, hey, how do I get the TPM owner password from Windows? In other words, this guy is basically saying something triggered the TPM module to not automatically decrypt my drive and I need that passphrase. And I did ask the guys uh, on our Matrix server uh, who have may, may have more recently set up Windows computers, does Windows 11 display that TPM passphrase allowing you to bypass the TPM module check? And the answer appears to still be no, which means people's systems are getting encrypted and they don't even know it most of the time. But don't worry, you can just log into your Microsoft account in an ideal world and access that security key. Of course, if you still know how and your you know Microsoft account these days are now tied to the same TPM module because they want to go completely passwordless. That's how ridiculous this has become. They are literally creating a chicken and egg circumstance here. So this person asks about this and the support person here basically says, yeah, that 
is never displayed to the user, there is a way you can go in and get that. And I would highly recommend if you are using Windows and uh, you are on Windows 11, you should absolutely go look up how to get the BitLocker passphrase and make sure you have that saved in a location that is not on that computer. Because if something trips in that module and you need that data off of that hard drive, there is no way to access that data without that passphrase. Microsoft does not give you that passphrase by default. They do not offer you that passphrase by default. They think it is perfectly acceptable to simply shove that into your Microsoft account, requiring you to log in to your Microsoft account, assuming, of course, you can because they're tying that to your individual device, which if that's not working, you can't get into the Microsoft account. So, yeah, you want to get that key. So that is really where my challenge has been. And the fact of the matter is, after they started doing this, this is an article here from May, uh, just a couple months ago, and people are getting locked out of their drives because they don't even know their drives have been decrypted. Something triggered the TPM module to require a passphrase, and they can't get in there. And the only way to access their Microsoft account is to use the pass key on your TPM module. Boom! Your data's gone. So back up your data, folks, somewhere other than OneDrive. All of this to say, I do support it full disk encryption, assuming you know your disk is encrypted and you know how to access that information. If you are using Windows, you need to, like now, get that BitLocker decryption passphrase put it somewhere secure, you may need that. In fact, you may need that if there is an update to the TPM module, you will need that information. Now, all this being said, I do support these technologies when people are fully aware of what is going on. And so I do like this mode, although I kind of think Ubuntu is going about it in sort of a messed up way. <laughs> we'll kind of talk about why. So in 2510, this is the, the this is going to be the last development snapshot before the LTS, the next LTS comes out, which is going to be the 2604. And uh, these min, uh, in between snapshots are where they try and test out a lot of new features. So I don't know if they're going to have this as a full ready feature feature in the next LTS or not, but they're experimenting with it now. I think they were trying to experiment with it before, but they have increased some of the forms and functions and how you can set it up so that now if you have a functioning TPM 2.0 module on your computer on an Ubuntu 2510 setup, you can set your system to use that module in order to decrypt your information. Unlike Windows, Ubuntu gives you warnings that you need to save that passphrase and you should put it in secure places and they give you options. So I really like that, number one, this is not forced on us from Ubuntu. It is simply an experimental option in Ubuntu. Number two, they are really telling you, you've got to save that passphrase because you might need it. So that is what they are doing. Of course, I use the basic Lux with a passphrase on all of my computers that are encrypted. That's the model I like better. The TPM module does save quite a bit of time because it can decrypt the drive without any external user input. However, the way Ubuntu is doing it, you also have the ability to set it up in such a way that you can require the TPM module and you can also require the uh, a passphrase as well. This is not a Lux passphrase. This is a different type of passphrase. So that is how they're they're working. Uh, so you can see here the what the screenshot's going to look like. So encrypt with a passphrase. This is your basic Lux. This is your. Uh, it looks like they're adding this as the main default, kind of encouraging the disk, full disk encryption utilizing the Lux passphrase. You can set it up without any form of encryption. They have a couple of experimentation. Uh, you have uh, ZFS without encryption, ZFS with encryption, uh, and these are experimental. The new one is hardware-backed encryption, which is the TPM based encryption. Now, I did not see a way you could do either a Lux passphrase or a TPM, but you can back up a TPM, of course, with the passphrase, and you can do a passphrase with 
uh, the, the TPM as well. So those are the various options that they are doing. So this is what the screen looks like. It does not allow you to click next until you get that recovery key that you can get it as a QR code. You can save it as a file. You can copy it and put it somewhere. And then you have to check the box that you have saved the recovery keys somewhere safe. So this is the step that Windows needs to do. They just don't want to do it because they think people will get confused. The problem is if people do not do this step, they potentially could lose all of their data, especially if you're doing the brand new Windows passwordless accounts like they're trying to do and locking your account to the same computer you're trying to get into. Hmm, somebody at Microsoft didn't think this through. At least the guys at Ubuntu are thinking things through. So once you do that, you, uh, this is actually uh, where you can uh, save a recovery key. This is if you're setting up a new one. And uh, this is what happens if there is an update to anything that could interfere. It requires you to enter that recovery key to verify that uh, you, you are the system administrator that can make any such changes. These are those things that prevent against some of the, uh, what they would call the hostile made type attacks, somebody having access to your computer doing things. And so that really is what they're working towards. Their post over here on their discourse has a lot more information. It covers through all the basic things. Here's your basic options, no encryption or encrypt with a passphrase. And then you can click the show advanced uh, options there, which will show you the other ones that we saw earlier. And uh, this is what this looks like if you click this down, as we've already seen. And uh, there may be situations where you do not have that as an option, whether your TPM module does not report the specific needs, or you might in run into a case where Secure Boot is not enabled, which is required for TPM. I believe that is the case, or some other things. And they do say in the text here that in future versions of this software, they are going to... Uh, they're going to give you ways to fix this if there is some fix. Obviously, if it's a, not a TPM 2.0 module, you just have to replace that module. If it's something like Secure Boot is disabled, it's going to tell you that you need to enable Secure Boot. It does give you extra options to save or even change the recovery key. So it does make sure you are not moving on with the install process without having saved that key, at least checking a box that you have saved the key. So Ubuntu is doing this right. Here is how you can change. Oh, here is how you set a passphrase in addition. This is not TPM module or passphrase. This is TPM module plus an external passphrase. Both of these are satisfied by the secure key that they are giving you. The recovery key will bypass both the TPM module and the passphrase check. So if you want to change your passphrase as of right now, you have to enter the current one, then you can change the new one. Now here is your downside about what Ubuntu is doing. Okay, are you ready for this nonsense? Utilizing this puts the whole kernel into snap. Means every system, every part of your system is reliant on the centralized proprietary system that Ubuntu has created Putting that kernel inside of Snap is required to make this work. On that basis, I would not personally use this in this current state for Ubuntu. They are moving in a positive direction, but until they, dis they disassociate this from Snap, I am not interested in using it because Snap is centralized and proprietary. This makes it open to weird things happening and centralized hackers doing uh, their way with the system if uh, that is something that could occur. And so I would warn against it in that basis. The other downside of this being in a snap is things like proprietary driver blobs like NVIDIA cards may not work if you are utilizing this system. So I would love to see them implement this outside of snap so that we could continue to use the software and test the software without relying on the proprietary centralized snap system for distribution but at the same time this is a positive direction and if windows did their encryption the way they are doing it here with the notices and the warnings and the learn mores and the explanations then i actually think that windows would be doing a better thing but as it is right now they're encrypting people's drives forcing people to 
path to tie that Microsoft account to a pass key on that same module and then saying, hey, if you can't get in, just get into your Microsoft account. Oh, you can't get in because your TBM module is bad and you can't access your security key because it's in your Microsoft account. <laughs> what a chicken and egg question Microsoft has created. At least Ubuntu is kind of doing it right here uh, outside the whole integrating with Snap thing. But uh, this is definitely something that is worth looking at if you are using Ubuntu for uh, doing some testing purposes. It might actually be a good thing to play around with this and see if that is uh, something that's going to work for you. So there are, is our video for today. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.